Hey, here's another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're going to be removing a pressed-in steel pin out of a big chunk of aluminum. And we're going to be doing it using a little portable welding table to hold up a part with. A while back I had a big project going on, on about 15 or 20 uh, parts and I used a, a, a strong hand tool portable welding table to, to build it, to help me build them. And we talked about back then some of the features on it like this fence to that help line parts up and also the fact that it, it tilts and adjusts in heights on this particular job I'm welding inside the square tube and then I had to get it at an angle and up in a place where I could see it and be comfortable so that was a really good handy feature. Now I've got a big Mac Daddy Build Pro table from Stronghand at another shop that I use for big projects but in my garage I also keep a welding machine for little walk-in quick quickie jobs that I can do at home without driving to the shop and I keep two of these Nomad tables there hang them on the wall so I can park in there you know, with my car if I need to. Well here's the part. So you got one steel pen it's a lineup dowel pen in there the other one was mislocated so it needs to be removed and it was attempted to be drilled out and it's down in there about a good three-eighths of an inch with a little really really thin lip on it around the edge so what I'm gonna have to do is get in there extend my electrode out way down in there and build up with weld metal so I can get a hold of, hold of it with something to pull it out. Now you see how the slots on the, uh, the table here come in handy. These come in handy for all kinds of things but this particular job it came in especially handy. I just got it down there at the right height where it was real comfortable to weld and I could also clamp in the slot if I wanted to. Alright so in order to get down in here and weld and get a nice crisp start, a nice crisp start uh, with the electrode I need a good sharp a needle sharp electrode and uh, just one way to, to sharpen electrodes there's lots of different ways but one quick way is chuck it up in an electric cordless drill motor on a belt sander and that's what I did today there's all kinds of ways and, and uh, we won't get into that today which is better but that's one way that works on most things so I got a good crisp start and, you can, and before I even did this I puddled uh, the very uh, lip of that thing just to kind of test the water and see how it was going to do but I need to get down puddled into the very bottom. So I got some puddle going in the bottom but I haven't got it all joined yet so I'm just going to let it soak. Let the heat kind of soak. Now I got them joined Now I'm just going to let it, I'm going to fuse all that and kind of together before I add any more rod in there and let the heat build up and kind of let it just kind of do what it wants to do. And the, Soaking the heat on a pen like this also kind of helps uh, get the heat in there and then helps shrink the metal a little bit and helps it uh, kind of free up uh, and turn loose when you're pulling it out. Now, just to, this is a hardened steel pen. Um, I'm just using the E70S2 mild steel TIG rod on there. Uh, you can use 4130 if, if, if something's really hard and, and it breaks. You can use something a little stronger. Uh, but this works good for what I'm doing today. So I'm just building and building, building up a little bit, getting some height on it. i got to get it up high enough off the surface of that aluminum so that I can grab hold of it with something and uh, pull it out. So once i got the height built up, let off a little bit on the amperage and then just go around and around and around to build up a kind of a mushroom head on it uh, so that I can get grab a hold of it with the vice grip pliers. So just about got it. See I'm backing off and you really need a foot pedal for doing this. You can you can tell I'm way down like five or ten amps here. You wouldn't it was to be really hard to do without a foot pedal uh, or even with a hand control. So I got a I got a little mushroom on there. It's not quite what I want, so I'm going to come over it real quickly here with another bead. Now you could also, if, you're, if this was threaded, if this was a stud, you could just weld a, once you got, a, got it built up, you could just stick a nut on it and weld the nut on there and then put a six-point socket on there and, and, and uh, crank it out. But this is just a straight pull uh, pressed in pen today. So now that I've got a nice, got it up high enough and I've got a little round head on it, a little pumpkin ball there, I'm going to grab it with some... Uh, with a little slide hammer tool here that is is very very handy just with a like a like the kind what you would use to pull dents on a, out of an auto body panel with a slide hammer tool you can fabricate one you can buy the buy the slide hammer and and get a piece of round stock weld it to a pair of uh, any any brand uh, locking pliers you you care to and uh, weld something a washer whatever on the end for a stop and uh, put put a groove in the jaws like this to grab a hold of something uh, round like that. It works a lot better than just the jaws. And so then you can go to town. So you can see this one's just about just about the right height. Could have 
Could have stood to be a little higher, but that's fine. That gets a good grip on there. I'm going to lock it down real tight and then just nice and easy, nice and easy, get some, get some taps on this thing with a lock down there through that slot on the, uh, on the table. Got a clamp down there and bam, it pulls right out. So you can see how deep it was in there, a good, a good inch, and uh, it still came out really easily. So way to put the, uh, put the groove in the pliers here to put a nice kind of somewhat precision groove. One way is with a carbide burr, and you just kind of put it in a grinder, chuck the, chuck the pliers up in a vise, and then gradually crank down on the, uh, on the knob and uh, as, as you burr out metal and you get a nice, you can probably put it in a drill press and drill a hole right through there too, but I don't know that you'd have very good luck drilling that. A carbide, carbide burr is a little harder and cuts it a little bit better. All right, I've had a couple of more jobs the same day come in that, that kind of uh, also just so happened that, uh, that this little portable table came in so handy for a little 303 uh, kind of a disc here welded on a shaft and it, was, it, it, it slipped down through that slot nice and easy and let me spin it around and get a weld on it. And then there was also another part made out of 4140 that came in that uh, same thing, shaft on the end, slip it down through the end and uh, was able to get access to it using this little third hand tool. That last video you can see I added that little copper alloy to the third hand tool in the last video to keep from getting arc strikes. But just it's just a convenient little table and uh, again lets me fold it up and hang it on the wall when I'm done. So these two little jobs I'll show in uh, next week's video, show the arc shots and some details on what filler metal I use for welding the 303 stainless to the, to the 4140. And uh, that's about it for today. All right. Thanks for watching, and uh, please visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.